Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss about the topic random and non-random meeting that is positive and negative assortative meeting. The main objectives of today's lecture are to know the basics of random and non-random meeting, to understand the positive and negative assortative meeting in detail, to discuss the causes of positive and negative assortative mating, to understand assortative mating in human and non-human organisms, to know the types of assortative mating in humans and finally to know the effects of positive and negative assortative mating. Dear students, let us start with the introduction first. Assortative mating in human genetics is a form of mating in which peer bonds are established on the basis of phenotype that is the observable characteristics or traits of an organism. For example, a person may choose a mate according to religious, cultural or ethnic preferences, professional interests or physical traits. Positive assortative mating or homogamy exists when people choose to mate with persons similar to themselves. For example, when a tall person mates with a tall person. This type of selection is very common. Negative assortative mating is the opposite case when organisms avoid mating with persons similar to themselves. Assortative mating also occurs in non-human animal populations. Indeed, phenotypic similarity is thought to underlie mate selection in a variety of species. Dear students, let us now discuss in detail the positive assortative mating or non-random mating. Positive assortative mating or homogamy is a mating pattern and a form of sexual selection in which Individuals or organisms with similar phenotypes or genotypes mate with one another more frequently than would be expected under a random mating pattern. A majority of the phenotypes that are subject to assortative mating are body size, visual signs, example like color, pattern, hairstyle, etc. and sexual selected traits such as the crust size. Dear students, let us now discuss the causes of positive assortative mating that is non-random mating. Several hypotheses have been proposed to explain the phenomena of assortative mating. Assortative mating has evolved from a combination of different factors which vary across different species. Assortative mating with respect to body size can arise as a consequence of intrasexual competition. In some species, size is correlated with fecundity in females. Therefore, males choose to mate with larger females with the larger males defeating the smaller males in coating them. Examples of species that display this type of assortative mating include the jumping spider that is Phidopus clarus and the leaf beetle that is diaprepus abbreviates. In other cases, larger females are better equipped to resist male courtship attempts and only the largest males are able to mate with them. Assortative mating can at times arise as a consequence of social competition. Traits or characteristics in certain individuals may indicate competitive ability which allows them to occupy the best territories. Individuals with similar traits that occupy similar territories are more likely to mate with one another. In this scenario, assortative mating does not necessarily arise from choice but rather by proximity. This was noted in Western Bluebirds although there is no definite evidence that this is the major factor resulting in color dependent assortative mating in this species. Different factors may apply simultaneously to result in assortative mating in any given species. Dear students, 
let us now discuss the positive assortative mating or non-random mating in non-human animals. Assortative mating in animals has been observed with respect to body size and color. Size related assortative mating is prevalent across many species of vertebrates and invertebrates. It has been found in the simultaneous hermaphrodites such as the land snail, Bryobina, Pellucida. One reason for its occurrence can be reciprocal intromission. That is, both individuals provide both male and female gametes during a single mating that happens in this species. Therefore, individuals with similar body size pair up with one another to facilitate this exchange. Moreover, it is known that larger individuals in such hermaphroditic species produce more eggs, so mutual mate choice is another factor leading to assortative mating in this species. Evidence for size related assortative mating has also been found in the mangrove snail, Litoraria, Audionania, and in the Japanese common toad Bufo japonicus. The second common type of assortative mating occurs with respect to coloration. This type of assortative mating is more common in socially monogamous bird species such as the eastern bluebirds that is Cialia cialis and western bluebirds that is Cialia mexicana. In both species, more brightly colored males mated with more brightly colored females and less brightly colored individuals paired with one another. Eastern bluebirds also mate assortatively for territorial aggression due to fierce competition for a limited number of nesting sites with tree swallows. Two highly aggressive individuals are better equipped to protect their nest encouraging assortative mating between such individuals. Assortative mating with respect to two common color morphs or forms striped and unstriped also exists in a polymorphic population of eastern red-backed salamanders that is Plethodon cinereus. Assortative mating is also found in many socially monogamous species of birds. Monogamous species are often involved in biparental care of their offsprings. Since males are equally invested in the offspring as the mother, both genders are expected to display mate choice, a phenomena termed as mutual mate choice. Mutual mate choice occurs when both males and females are searching for a mate that will maximize their fitness. In birds, female and male ornamentation can indicate better overall condition or such individuals might have better genes or be better suited as parents. Dear students, let us now talk about the positive assortative mating or non-random mating in humans. Assortative mating in humans has been widely observed and can be broken down into two types of human assortative mating. These are genetic assortative mating or assortative mating with mate choice based on genetic type and phenotypical expression and social assortative mating that is the assortative mating with mate choice based on social cultural and other societal factors. Dear students, let us now first talk about the genetic assortative mating. Genetic assortative mating is well studied and documented. In 1903, Pearson and colleagues reported strong correlation in height, span of arms and the length of left forearm between husband and wife in thousand couples. Assortative mating with regards to appearance does not end there. Males prefer female faces that resemble their own when provided image of three women with one image modified to resemble their own. However, the same result does not apply to females selecting male faces. Genetically related individuals that is third or fourth cousin level 
exhibit higher fitness than unrelated individuals. Associative mating based on genomic similarities plays a role in human marriage in the United States and many other countries. Spouses are more genetically similar to each other than to randomly chosen individuals. The probability of marriage increases by roughly 15% for every one standard deviation increase in genetic similarity. However, some researchers argue that this assortative meeting is caused purely by population stratification, the fact that people are more likely to marry within ethnic subgroups such as Swedish Americans. At the same time, individuals display disassociative mating for genes in the major histocompatibility complex region or MHC region on chromosome 6. Individuals feel more attracted to orders of individuals who are genetically different in this region. This promotes major histocompatibility complex or MHC heterozygosity in the children, making them less vulnerable to pathogens. Apart from humans, this assortative mating with regards to the MHC coding region has been widely studied in mice and has also been reported to occur in fish. Dear students, let's now talk about social assortative mating. In addition to genetic assortative mating, humans also demonstrate patterns of assortative mating based on sociological factors as well. Sociological assortative mating is typically broken down into three categories. Mate choice based on socioeconomic stats, mate choice based on racial or ethnic background, and mate choice based on religious beliefs. Assortative mating based on socioeconomic stats is the broadest of these general categories. It includes the tendency of humans to prefer to mate within their socioeconomic peers, that is those with similar social standing, job prestige, educational attainment, or economic background as they are themselves. This tendency has always been present in society. There was no historical area when most of the individuals preferred to sort and had actually sorted negatively into couples or matched randomly along these traits or characters. Still, this tendency was weaker in some generations than in the others. Dear students, another form of sociological assortative mating is assortative mating based on racial and ethnic background. As already discussed in the context of the genetically similar preferring to mate with one another, this form of assortative mating can take many varied and complicated forms. While the tendency as already discussed does exist and people do tend to marry those genetically similar to themselves, especially if within the same racial or ethnic group, this tend can change in various ways. It is common, for example, for the barriers to intermarriage with the general population experienced by a minority population to decrease as the numbers of the minority population increase. This assimilation reduces the prevalence of this form of assortative mating. However, growth of a minority population does not necessarily lead to a decreased barriers to intermarriage. This can be seen in the sharp increase in non-white Hispanic population of the United States in the 1990s and 2000 that correlated with a sharp decrease in the percentage of non-white Hispanics intermarrying with the general population. Dear students, let's now discuss the effects of positive assortative mating, that is non-random mating. Assortative mating has reproductive consequences. Positive assortative mating increases genetic relatedness within a family, whereas negative assortative mating accomplishes the opposite effect. Either strategy may be employed by the individuals of a species depending upon which strategy maximizes 
fitness and enables the individuals to maximally pass on their genes to the next generation. For instance, in the case of eastern bluebirds, assortative mating for territorial aggression increases the probability of the parents obtaining and securing a nest site for their offsprings. This in turn increases the likelihood of survival of the offspring and consequently fitness of the individuals. In birds whose coloration represents well-being and fecundity of the bird, positive assortative mating for color increases the chances of genes being passed on and off to the offsprings being in good condition. Also, positive assortative mating for behavioral traits allows for more efficient communication between individuals and they can cooperate better to raise their offsprings. On the other hand, mating between individuals of genotypes which are too similar allows for the accumulation of harmful recessive alleles which can decrease fitness. Such mating between genetically similar individuals is termed inbreeding which can result in the emergence of autosomal recessive disorders. Positive assortative mating is a key element leading to reproductive isolation within a species which in turn may result in speciation in sympatry over time. Sympatric speciation is defined as the evolution of a new species without geographical isolation. Speciation from assortative mating has occurred in the Middle East blind mole rat cicadas and the European corn borer. Like other animals, humans also display these genetic results of assortative mating. What makes humans unique, however, is the tendency towards seeking mates that are not only similar to them in genetics and in appearances, but those who are similar to them economically, socially, educationally, and culturally. These tendencies towards using sociological characteristics to select a mate has many effects on the lives and livelihoods of those who choose to marry one another as well as their children and future generations. Dear students, let's now discuss in detail about the negative associative mating or random mating. Negative assortative mating, also known as disassortative mating or heterogamy, is a mating pattern in which individuals with dissimilar phenotypes mate with one another more frequently than would be expected under random mating. Disassortative mating reduces genetic similarities within the population and produces a greater number of heterozygotes. The pattern is character specific but does not affect allele frequencies. This random mating pattern will result in deviation from the hardy weinberg principle which states that genotype frequencies in a population will remain constant from generation to generation in the absence of other evolutionary influences such as mate choice in this case. So random mating is different from outbreeding which refers to mating patterns in relation to genotypes rather than phenotypes. Due to homotypic preferences, bias towards the same type assortative mating occurs more frequently than disassortative mating. This is due to the fact that homotypic preferences increase relatedness between mates and between parents and offsprings that would promote cooperation and increase inclusive fitness. With disassortative mating, heterotypic preferences, that is bias, towards different types in many cases has been shown to increase overall fitness. When this preference is favored, it allows a population to generate and maintain polymorphism that is genetic variation within a population. The fitness advantage aspect of disassortative mating seems straightforward, but the evolution of selective forces involved in disassortative mating are still largely unknown in natural populations. 
a random mating population that is panmixia is one where all individuals are potential partners. This assumes that there are no mating restrictions, neither genetic nor behavioral upon the population and that therefore all recombination is possible. This Wachlund effect assumes that the overall population is panmictic. Dear students, to signify the importance of this, imagine several different finite populations of the same species, for example, a grazing herbivore, isolated from each other by some physical characteristics of the environment like dense forest areas separating grazing lands as time progresses, natural selection and genetic drift will slowly move each population towards genetic differentiation that would make each population genetically unique that could eventually lead to speciation events or extirpation. However, if the separation factor is removed before this happens, for example, a road is cut through the forest and the individuals are allowed to move about freely, the individual population will still be able to interbreed. As the population interbreed over time, they become more genetically uniform, functioning again as a single panmictic population. In a panmictic species, all of the individuals of a single species are potential partners and the species gives no mating restrictions throughout the population. Panmixia can also be referred to as random mating, referring to a population that randomly chooses their mate rather than sorting between the adults of the population. So random mating allows species to reach genetic diversity through gene flow. For example, Anglua rostrate or the American eel exhibits random mating throughout the entire species. This allows the eel to have phenotypic variation in their offsprings and survive in a wide range of environmental conditions. Dear students, let's now discuss about the types of negative associative mating that is random mating. Imprinting is one example of negative associative mating. A model shows that individuals imprint on a genetically transmitted trait during early ontogeny and choosy females later use those parental images as a basis of mate choice. A viability reducing trait may be maintained even without the fertility cost of same type meetings. With imprinting, preferences can be established even if it is initially rare when there is a fertility cost of same type meetings. One uncommon type of disassociative mating is the female preferences on rare or novel male phenotypes. A study on guppies, that is Poecilia reticulata, revealed that the female preference was sufficient to tightly maintain polymorphism in male traits. This type of male choice shows that costly preferences can persist at higher frequencies if mate choice is hindered, which would allow the alleles to approach fixation. Dear students, let's now talk about the effects of negative associative mating, that is random mating. Negative associative mating may result in balancing selection and the maintenance of high genetic variation in the population. This is due to the excess heterozygotes that are produced from negative associative mating relative to a randomly mating population as represented in the figure. Dear students, let's now understand the effects of negative associative mating that is random mating in humans. The most popular example of negative associative mating in humans is preference for genes in the major histocompatibility complex that is MHC region on chromosome 6. Individuals feel more attracted to orders of individuals who are genetically different in this region. This promotes MHC heterozygosity in the children, making them less vulnerable to pathogens as is represented in the figure. Dear students, 
let's now understand the effects of negative associative mating that is random mating in non-human species. Evidence from research regarding coloration in heliconius butterflies suggests that negative associative mating is more likely to emerge when phenotypic variation is based on self referencing that is may preference depends on phenotype of the choosing individual. Therefore, dominance in relationships influences the evolution of negative associative mating. Negative associative mating has been found with traits such as body symmetry in Empridromus inversus snails. Normally, in snails, rarely are individuals of the opposite coil able to mate with individuals of a normal coil pattern. However, it has been discovered that this species of snail frequently mates between individuals of opposing coils. It is said that the chirality of the super metaphor and the female reproductive tract have a greater chance of producing offsprings. This example of negative associative mating promotes polymorphism within the population. In the scale eating predator fish, that is Perisodus microlepis, negative associative mating allows the individuals with a rear phenotype of mouth opening direction to have better success as predators. House mice, as shown in the figure, conduct negative associative mating as they prefer mates genetically dissimilar to themselves. Specifically, order profiles in mice are strongly linked to genotypes at the MHC loci controlling change in the immune response. When MHC heterozygous offsprings are produced, it enhances their immune competence because of their ability to recognize a large range of pathogens. Thus, the mice tend to prefer providing good genes to their offsprings so they will mate with individuals with differences at the MHC loci or position. In the seaweed fly, Coleopa frigida heterozygotes at the locus or position alcohol dehydrogenase or ADH have been shown to express better fitness by having higher larval density and relative viability. Females displayed negative associative mating in respect to the alcohol dehydrogenase locus because they would only mate with males of the opposite alcohol dehydrogenase genotype. It is suspected that they do this to maintain genetic variation in the population. Dear students, let's now summarize the lecture on associative mating. Associative mating is non-random mating based on phenotypes rather than between relatives. Positive associative mating or negative associative mating occurs if the mated pair in a population are composed of individuals with the same phenotype more often or less often than expected by random mating respectively. In genetics, random mating involves the mating of individuals regardless of any physical genetic or social preference. In other words, the mating between two organisms is not influenced by any environmental, hereditary or social interaction as is shown in the figure. Hence, potential mates have an equal chance of being selected. Random mating is a factor assumed in the Hardy-Wienberg principle and is distinct from lack of natural selection in viability selection. For instance, selection occurs before mating. In simple terms, random mating is the ability of individuals in a population to interbreed without restrictions. Individuals are able to move about freely within their habitat, possibly over a range of hundreds to thousands of miles and thus breed with other members of the population. In comparison, non-random mating is a phenomena in which individuals choose their mates based on their genotypes or phenotypes. Dear students, it was all about today's lecture regarding random and non-random mating that is positive and negative associative mating. Hope you have understood it well. See you next time with a new topic. Till then, take care. 
goodbye.